Hey guys, it's your favorite reliability test guy here with another fun-filled action-packed video on reliability tests and validation topics. This current video is on testing. I hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. In this video, we will cover an introduction to testing. What is testing? and what types of testing exist. I'm just kidding, I don't need a PowerPoint for this video. Let's go ahead and cut to the chase here. What is testing? Testing is how you verify, validate, and make sure your product isn't a piece of junk. So let's go ahead and get, define a few of the types of tests that are performed. You have component testing, you have subsystem testing, and you have system testing. So let's go ahead and define each of these and the types of tests that are performed. Okay, let's go ahead and define component testing first. So component testing is a piece of your system or your product that you want to test. Some component tests could be either hardware or software. So you can have component software testing, you can also have hardware component testing. This is a very critical first step in your product development. You want to make sure the components that you selected from a hardware perspective are not a piece of junk from a supplier or if you developed it in-house. And you also want to make sure that your software code snippet works as well. So for the component testing, this could be environmental testing, such as temperature testing or mechanical testing. It could be electrical performance testing for electrical components. And for software component testing, this could be taking that piece of code and just making sure that it operates as how you intended it for that particular component of the software. So let's go ahead and talk about subsystem testing now. Subsystem testing is where you take a bunch of little components and you put them together as a subassembly for your entire system or into a software module that is part of your overall software program for your product. For the software side, this is where you start getting into doing things like regression testing, stress testing, and making sure that all your little pieces work together as a whole software module before you plug it into a larger part of your system or your entire software program. This is important to start at component and then subsystem with software and components to make sure that little guy, that little piece of your entire system actually works before you plug it into a bigger part and then it becomes more difficult to troubleshoot which line of code or which component is causing an issue with your entire system. For the hardware testing portion, again, this could be environmental testing, this could be electrical integration testing to make sure all your little pieces are working together as a subsystem or subassembly of your entire system. Okay, let's go ahead and get into system testing now. So system testing is where you take all those subsystems or subassemblies and you package them together as your final product or your intended final product design. Same thing with software. You'll take your software module and you'll plug it in a bunch of your small software modules into an entire software program that you will want to test to verify that it works as an entire software program. Okay, there we have it. We went through a quick definition of testing and the types of testing component, subsystem, and system level testing. A quick note before I let you go is for your reliability and confidence sample size determination. Unless your product's something really cheap that you can run at the system level with an adequate sample size, you will need to select a sample size plan that at your subsystem and component level that will give you a determined reliability and confidence at your system level. You'll have to do this in cases where you have a vehicle, such as a passenger vehicle, or a large piece of industrial equipment where it'd be too expensive to do any kind of real reliability and confidence testing program. With that being said, you still need to test that system level to the best of your ability with the largest amount of sample sizes that your company can afford or will allow you to test with. But you need to make sure that you have set up a reliability and confidence testing program or validation program based on your component and subsystem sample sizes. And that is it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and have a great day.